This is called A Sentimental Education, and the title, of course, uh, is from the novel by Flaubert. Uh, it was his last, uh, centered on um, the emotional life of a, his young protagonist, Frederick Moreau, uh, and it's largely autobiographical. Um, an online evaluation of that uh, the last uh, uh, Flaubert novel said, the characters are marked by capriciousness and self-interest. So it seemed appropriate for me to steal that title and talk about my memories of uh, being a teenager. <laughs> uh, dances, um, early 60s rock and roll, and the general misery teenagers think they are subject to. And those of us that are over 39, I think, will remember most of the um, names and uh, pieces that come up here. There's no copyright on titles. Um, Joyce Carol Lotes has a short story collection called A Sentimental Education. And those of you that are really down with um, current pop music, No Free Kitten, which is a band, uh, has an album by that title. I don't have the Free Kitten DVD. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, it has a uh, epigraph from uh, Gustave Flaubert that says, I want to write the moral history of the men of my generation, or more accurately, the history of their feelings. A snowball's chance in hell is what we had, that and hope like a 50 cent piece in our pocket we were dying to spend. So we stood there brooding in our skinny ties and tab collar shirts, staring down at our white socks and polished street shoes. This was a test but not in Latin or quadratic equations. This was a mixer. Immediate social science at the boarding school and as sophomores, we were unprepared. Pressed there into the dark, holding up the wall for all that we were worth, which didn't amount to much, according to the girls bust in from the academies who looked away any time one of us lost restraint and risk the grand humiliation of asking for a dance. The gym overflowed with heartache. Yearning, anxiety, and a dozen assorted adolescent torments. The Shirelles asked, will you still love me tomorrow? Barbara Lewis sighed, hello, stranger. And number one on the charts for weeks, thumping intro, downbeat, tambourines, castanets, and violins, that wall of sound, Be My Baby by the Ronettes, drove us crazy. Hormones like time bombs pulsing in our blood, like barrels ready to tumble over the lip of Niagara Falls, every self-conscious cell ready to burst with the first sign of encouragement, which was miles from coming our way despite the fact that each of us, according to his natural gifts and available materials, brought to bear every scientific skill we'd developed, styling the wings and waterfalls of our flat tops and ducktails with butch wax, brill cream, or wild root cream oil. High rolling waves as seen in the photos of Elvis, Fabian, or Fats Domino on their album covers, the only clues we were given to prepare ourselves. Inept and uninitiated as we were for the longest of romantic shots, Paul Anka's I'm Just a Lonely Boy played next, and the light flicked off our plastered doo-wop hair and got us nowhere. Observers of that vast emotional undertow just before us, as we did our sullen best to adopt the casual manner of an upperclassman, who, staring at the floor as if about to crush a smoldering cigarette with his boot, copied that surly James Dean glare from rebel without a cause, as if he understood the motivation and reckless angst of 50s hot rodders, who would one day turn into the desperate insurance executives and actuaries who parked their station wagons in the carport each day after work. The rest of us just tried to behave like the rest of us. There being perhaps one in 20 who could do the twist the hully gully, mashed potato, or even a rank imitation of the surfer stomp. There was no way to arrive with experience, 
none of us uncool enough to face our own reflection in the TV, uh, practicing a new step at home watching American Bandstand. We were flying blind, seat of our pants, life at arm's distance, 14, 15, and encouraged to socialize by teachers in suits and stiff cocktail dresses who were posted in every dim corner ready to break up the older kids, lucky enough to embrace for three minutes of mystery and minor electrical outage as Kathy Young and the Innocent slurred a thousand stars. The likelihood of this leading to happiness, knowledge, or especially to anyone one-fifth as fabulous as Ronnie Spector of the Ronettes, or even to a trace element of social grace or essential physical information was remote at best. Not that we cared in the least about the acquisition of manners cleaned up and going nowhere past longing in the dark. I was years away from a detailed understanding of heartbreak sending me to the sea on my motorbike to stare at the waves, where it was all silence and sources as yet unnamed, where I would be oblivious to such luxury and good luck as, looking back, it would reveal itself to me 40 years later. Young, plenty of time to kill, to indulge myself writing some first melancholy lines on a sheet of folded binder paper, each image of anguish marshaled within the light blue lines, each precious misery, it then seemed, would go on forever.